photographer in Seattle, Washington. Today I wanted to go ahead and talk about some things that I've been loving in the month of October. I love the idea of favorites videos to talk about products, places, movies, videos, things like that, that I've just been enjoying in the month of October that I think would be fun to talk about. If you hear construction, it's construction, <laughs> and I'm sorry. Let's start out with some fashion items. Firstly being this beanie. It's actually a men's beanie, but I fell in love with the color and I had to purchase it. It's very warm and I love to wear it around the house or when it's cold outside. So it's definitely been something I've been wearing all month long. The next fashion favorite that I have is this necklace. It's a rose quartz necklace that looks like a little watermelon slice. It's a perfect mix of dainty and statement. Uh, not too overpowering, but also not too small that I would get lost in my hair. Um, and I can wear it with everything. My accessories that I have are gold and rose gold. So it all goes nicely together. I just like the idea of having a little bit of rose quartz next to my heart. So that's definitely a favorite. I got this at Target. What's an October favorites video without some pumpkins in it? So right here I have the Bath & Body Works Fine Mist in Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte. I got one of these a couple years ago and I loved the scent of it. I also got a lotion of it. This year I wasn't too blown away with these scents from Bath & Body Works, so I just got this one instead of doing their deals. And mm. Mm. yeah, definitely. I love marshmallow scents. Speaking of scents, I have a trillion zillion different candles. I have really been going through the candles. I love having the house smell of fall and campfire and pumpkin and anytime I have somebody over and they're always like, oh, it smells so good in here. I said, oh, I know. But one of my favorite pumpkin spice candles has to be the Walmart one. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's it's not too syrupy, it's not that sugary sweet that really can get your headache going or something is just so sickeningly sweet. It really has that more earthy spiced pumpkin scent to it. And so that's the one I always go to and they're really low cost. Some of the more expensive ones I just end that very they don't smell enough, they are too sugary, so I really like the Walmart one. Another Walmart candle, but I have a couple more actually. I have this one in hazelnut cream and this one, the Apple's Delight. Oh, I smelt this one. I just had to bring it home. I have another Apple one that's actually burning over there, but it's really similar to this one. And this one is so, I love Apple candles and they smell wet. You can smell the water, they smell juicy. And this one definitely has that wet, juicy smell to it. And this one's nice to do in the morning. I'm not much of a coffee drinker, um, but I do love the smell of it, and this definitely gives that sweet, creamy, morning coffee smell in the air. I think this one also is from Walmart. Uh, Better Homes and Garden, around the campfire. Oh, this one smells so good. Mm. A beautiful, earthy, woodsy smell, of course, hence firewood, and then that, that uh, sweet marshmallow very good. I remember I got a marshmallow candle several years ago and I was like, this is a thing and this is glorious. Still talking about marshmallow candles. I have this one from Bloom and Prosper. I actually really like these candles a lot. I have another one that is burning over there. Um, but I really like this brand. I found this brand at Ross um, and this one is their Toasted Marshmallow. This one is a lot sweeter than the Better Homes and Gardens. Um, so this one I don't burn. I burn for not as long as this one. I can I can have this one go for hours, but this one can get a little little too sweet in the air and start to get that headache a rock and a roll in. So and this one that I actually finished and saved for this video is the Woodland Park. Maybe we'll see some of those that I've purchased 
next month after I try them out, but I have been using this on the daily. It has changed my highlighting routine, and that is this oval brush. This one I got off of Amazon. I'm not sure the brand, but more importantly, it's the size. I think that is the distinguishing factor. And I have been loving really hammering into my highlighters and then going across the cheekbones like this to get a really broad um, highlight stroke, very straight, very dense highlight, as well as the bridge of my nose and my cupid's bow. And I'll even, if I'm really feeling brisky, go above the eyebrow, maybe even on the high points of the brow, on the brow bone. Um, but this has just been such a perfect shape to really just go in, highlight. I like how much product it picks up. I've really been enjoying this brush for highlight. I do have a couple food items here. First being this Archer Mix. This is a something that one might use for like overnight oats or overnight chia seed pudding or as a maybe a granola or a smoothing topper, smoothie bowl topper. Um, I have, I heard this recipe from Apples and Amanda's and she had gotten it from another chef, I don't remember, but I will link both of them down below in their videos or their, I think the one is a blog page. I'll link that down below if you want to see the original where I got this from. Um, it was in uh, one of her videos talking about magnesium. And so this is really nutrient dense and packed with um, micronutrients like zinc and magnesium. I have in here oats, raisins, pumpkin seeds, which are full of that zinc, um, chia seeds, flax seeds, coconut, and I think that's, oh, and I have this delicious dark chocolate um, in these big chunks. And I have been, how I make this is I will pour some almond milk into a bowl and let it sit for a while so that the components in it, such as the chia seeds, flax seeds, and um, oatmeal can puff up, can get gelatinous, and it becomes more of a thicker texture. And that's really delicious to eat with frozen fruit on top, that will have to defrost the frozen fruit with fruit, um, a little bit of maple syrup for sweetener. Um, so yeah, this has been a good breakfast that I've really been enjoying. The next thing that's been delicious has been this tofu quinoa taco meat. Um, we made it a couple times this week, this month, and it is so good. It's just tofu ground up with um, some cooked quinoa, and then I put in taco mix and some curcumin and pepper to try and get in that extra curcumin. It's a beautiful meat replacer for um, Mexican food. Um, we, I eat a lot of Mexican food, and normally I just have it with beans, or this morning I had it with um, sauteed mushrooms. But this was really delicious, definitely, definitely really good. If you'd like a recipe on it, let me know. I might do that. I might do a video on that. Next is going to talk about some tea. I've been trying to incorporate more water and tea into my daily routine and to get those added health benefits from water and tea. And so I also wanted to get a little moody and festive. So I've got picked up some celestial seasonings, Vermont maple ginger herbal tea. And this is very, very of the season. It has a, it is very ginger. I think ginger should be the first one. Um, it doesn't have a strong maple taste. The maple is more just to make it sweet. That way it isn't as intense of a spiced tea taste. Um, so I, if you're not a big fan of ginger, I probably would not recommend this. But I love this, hot and cold. I actually have it in my jar here. This is how I most mostly drink tea, unless I'm freezing, then I'll up. I really like, I saw this when I was recently, I've, I've had some of their other ones, I've had their black cherry one which I really like, and the thing that really caught my eye when I read the box was the sustainable packaging. So this of course is cardboard, so this is recyclable. They don't come with a, a string, so therefore they don't come with a staple to attach the string, and it's just paper after you're done. And so it's a lot more um, biodegradable. to support. Um, I have been, I bought <laughs> a stove, I bought an appliance that has made cooking so much more fun and exciting and that is the steamer. I don't have the lid now. Uh, I think the lid is still in the drawer. I can't believe how much this has changed. Um, I've been 
steaming broccoli and green beans and potatoes and carrots and all of it and it's so quick and easy i just it's much better than baking it i i like the taste of it better the texture of it better and um it's something i can just pop on the stove and not really forget but i did forget about it and i wasn't thinking and i said oh i ran out of water on the bottom it needs more water because i think i was cooking potatoes at the time so it takes a little bit longer to steam used it since I done that. I did that like a week ago. But the bottom feels okay. The inside does have a little bit of warping on it. Hopefully I don't have to buy a new one. But yeah, don't be silly and warp your pan. Alright, onto some podcast. At the beginning of the month, uh, the podcast that's been number one on the charts for a little bit, Dirty John, came out. Um, I went through that every day that it came out. Um, just went through it. I really enjoyed the type of storytelling, this investigative, you're going through, telling the events of a story, piecing together, um, and allowing elements of mystery to come through. I was very frustrated though by a lot of the characters in it. I, I remember really just being flabbergasted by some of these women's decision. Um, so let me tell you about it. Dirty John is about, is a story following a woman
this is a 2012-2013 film with Jake Gyllenhaal in it and my god is this a very gorgeously shot film. It has that that cold and grimy tone to it. It's all, it's, it's sepia, it's sepia in Toronto. The film is about um, a history teacher um, gets recommended to see a film by one of his co-workers and in the film he notices a actor in the back that looks exactly like him. He goes and he finds his doppelganger and tries to figure out what's going on because it is bizarre. <laughs> um, but definitely at the end of that movie when the last scene shows and then it cuts to the credits, I screamed! I yelled because I was so confused. I was so taken aback. I remember yelling. I thought there was another hour left of the film. I thought we were only halfway through the movie and then it ends. That definitely wasn't a bad thing. That's just what the movie was. And looking into it, I'm actually planning to watch, um, I've watched uh, maybe the first five minutes of Chris Stuckman's uh, spoiler-filled deep analysis of the film. So I would definitely recommend watching the film and then trying to piece the, the pieces together yourself. I just, I just love these like thinker movies. They're really good. I, if you've seen it, I would love to know your thoughts on it. If you Did you enjoy it? What is your take on it? I've heard several different takes, but I'm kind of leaning towards what the director said about the film, of course. <laughs> oh, <laughs> one last film to talk about, definitely not as serious as those two before. However, I want to see a lot more movies like that, so if you have any recommendations about films that are darker, thinker films, I love the Coen brothers, I really enjoy um, harsher movies, I love Jake Gyllenhaal, he's good in everything. Um, but I would love your rec movie recommendations um, because I want to start watching movies again. It's just not something that I've done in a while. I think it's difficult for me to dedicate sitting on the couch and watching a film for two hours and not doing 8,300 million other things that I want to do. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, that's two hours that I could be doing something else. <laughs> um, but I would love your movie recommendations um, and maybe I'll talk about them in next month's favorites. All right, the last movie I want to talk about that is uh, much more campy is The Babysitter. This is a Netflix, I think it's a Netflix original, um, but it is just your goofy slasher comedy, um, very over the top. I really enjoyed the quality of it. The editing is very fast and exciting and fun. The colors within it are really exciting. It's a film about this 10 year old boy has a babysitter who turns out to be a satanist and invites all of her friends over to do like murder and satanic worship. We watched it at my friend's house after having a couple beers. Definitely just a fun, everybody hanging out watching a, a cheesy movie for, you know, the festive Halloween time. So I think the last thing that I want to talk about is something, um, a place I, I've been dealing with a lot of sinus issues lately and therefore I haven't been going out as much. But I'm glad I wrote it down because at the beginning of the month I went to my friend's birthday um, and he just had a little bar crawl in Belltown and we went to a bar called Jupiter and I had never been. And it is a arcade, so the front's like a bar and then in the back it's full of pinball and arcade games and beautiful paint, uh, beautiful artwork, just a really fun atmosphere. But in the corner there is a little open room with these two big arcade televisions and it's a screen and then there's five joysticks and five sets. So five players per machine and there's two. And this was actually a game created by the owners of the bar and it's called Killer Bee. And I can't believe how fun this was. It's a relatively simple game. It took me a couple tries to try and figure it out because everybody's just yelling. <laughs> um, but you have five players on each game and I think that was just the most exciting part is that you are playing a game with 10 people. And so each machine is a different team and each guy, so you have one queen bee and the queen bee is trying to kill the other queen bee and you're also trying to collect berries so that you can level up and then you can become a flying dude that can kill other flying dudes or kill the queen or you can be a runner and pick up. You have three different ways to win the game. I'm not explaining this correctly. If you're in Seattle, you definitely have to check it out and tell me what, if you loved it. There are three different ways to win. You can win by killing the queen. You can win by driving the snail full of berries into the winning goals post. You can win by collecting enough berries. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this correctly, 
but if you've been or if you are in Seattle, um, you should check it out. Belltown has been the place that I've been going to if I really want to go out to like some bars or whatever. It's um, not too terribly priced. Uh, I used to go to Capitol Hill a lot, but I think Capitol Hill is a little too crazy now. I don't know. Um, crazy for me. I think I've been calming down a little bit, <laughs> but that was the summer. I used to live right near, near Capitol Hill, so I would just walk. I used to live near like Pike and Pine on the hill, and so I would just walk there and then hang out and then just walk home, uh, which probably is not the smartest. Um, but now I live closer to Belltown, so it's just easier to get myself to Belltown and hang out at those bars. And there are no dance clubs there. If you want to go dance, you gotta go to the hill, but you gotta also pay cover if you want to go dance, which I think is silly, very silly. All right, so those are all of my favorites. Um, what did you enjoy throughout the month of October? Did you see any fun, exciting movies? Remember, I want your film, I want your movie recommendations. Information for what I am wearing on my face, as well as things that I've referenced throughout this video will be linked down below, so check that out if any of that interests you. Thank you so much for watching this video, and 